Imagine a single drop of rain. During a storm, this drop combines with others to pour billions of gallons of water on Fort Wayne. Imagine all of that water. Where does it go? Down, of course. Falling on our homes, neighborhoods, and communities rinsing off buildings, vehicles, and streets. But when there's too much rain, it overwhelms our sewers and has no place to go, carrying things picked up along the way to our rivers. Imagine if there is a way to collect, clean, and return that water. Imagine if our streets didn't flood, if our basements stayed dry, and we could keep pollution out of our rivers. Guess what? We can. Imagine Tunnel Works, a deep rock tunnel that's more than a sewage project, an investment in our community today and in the future, supporting 4,500 new jobs, preventing nearly 1 billion gallons of sewage from getting into our rivers, and preserving our most important natural resource, water. Imagine the entire community joining together to protect Fort Wayne and its waterways for generations to come. More than a century of passion and hard work has taught us that the limits of a project, whether technical or physical, exist only in the mind. That is how we have connected different cities, people, and cultures. We became innovative leaders in the sectors of transportation and water and in sustainability, thanks to the expertise that we acquired after more than 125 years of building public works in the most varied sectors. The merger with tunneling powerhouse, S.A. Healy, has enabled us to expand into the world of tunneling. With more than 200 contracts in major U.S. cities, we have taken part in the construction of metro lines to help reduce commuting times, hydraulic tunnels to supply water to drought-ridden areas, and redesign entire sewer networks. In San Francisco, we built a tunnel within eight feet of active lines with 546 trains passing by daily, providing a time-saving travel alternative in one of the fastest growing cities in the country. In Las Vegas, we provided a reliable water source to two million residents with one of the world's deepest subaqueous tunnels. We worked 350 feet underwater, 100 feet under the lake bed, excavating under 15 bars of maximum water pressure. In Washington, D.C., we excavated tunnels to help reduce combined sewer overflow by 98% into the Anacostia River. In Portland, we were the first to use new tunnel boring machine technology to excavate an 18,000 foot tunnel to help improve the city's water quality. Whether delivering clean drinking water, creating new transportation routes, or regulating wastewater management, we are the underground innovators. We are Lane. We build value. The work site you are visiting today is about seven acres. It houses two deep shafts, the 35-foot diameter working shaft and the 65-foot diameter pump station shaft. You are currently in the rectangular building that's highlighted in this video clip. For safety reasons, this tour will not allow us to go down the shafts, but this video clip gives us a glimpse of their depth and size. While we appear to be going horizontally, we're actually heading down the pump station shaft some 220 feet below the Earth's surface. Today, we visit Mama Joe, the tunnel boring machine that is currently in several pieces above ground, but will soon be put together underground stretching longer than a football field. Made in Germany, the machine came via cargo ship, some pieces through Baltimore, and the cutter head through Burns Harbor, Indiana. From there, the pieces of the tunnel boring machine were shipped via truck down Indiana highways to Fort Wayne. Let's take a look at the example of the world's largest mix shield to demonstrate the principle on which Heron Connect hydro shields work. The configuration of the openings and the excavation tools on the 15.43 meter cutting wheel means it is perfectly adapted to the difficult geological conditions. 
The six main spokes of the cutting wheel are accessible under atmospheric conditions. For tools to be replaced, the cutting wheel is halted in the maintenance position. The accessible spokes allow the maintenance staff to reach the worn tools and replace them. The cutting wheel is driven by a total of 15 electric motors with a nominal power of 250 kilowatts each and a maximum torque of up to 39,984 kilonewtons. There are three air locks for maintenance. The center lock is movable and can be linked to the pressure protected interior of the cutting wheel. Nineteen triple hydraulic cylinder presses produce a maximum thrust force of 203,066 kilonewton to move the mix shield forward. The cylinders brace themselves against the last previously installed lining ring and push the mix shield ahead. The erector lifts the individual concrete segments and positions them precisely for installation. The first gantry is located behind the erector. Due to the machine's large diameter, the backup system has three levels so that it can accommodate the slurry pump, control cabinets, bentonite supply system, and hydraulic pumps. The segment feeder is mounted on the first gantry to transport the segments to the erector. The total length of the mix shield up to the third gantry is 135 meters. The mix shield works in two phases. The first phase is the installation of a lining ring. Concrete segments are supplied by the segment feeder and subsequently lifted by the erector. In the installation area, the hydraulic cylinders are temporarily retracted in order to provide enough space for the new segment. The segments are positioned with millimeter precision and secured by cylinders immediately after their installation. After that, the segments can be bolted into position. The conical keystone is inserted from the front. When a complete lining ring has been installed, the bottom segment, which is a retractable module, is put in place in the lower section of the last previously installed ring. It serves as a foundation for the gantry, which can now follow. The segment transport crane moves the segments via the bridge of the second gantry to the transfer area of the first gantry. The segments are lifted and turned by the transport crane and then positioned on the segment feeder. The segment feeder moves the segments under the first gantry to the erector and into the take-up position. The excavation chamber is situated behind the cutting wheel and separated by a submerged wall from the working chamber. The excavation chamber is completely filled with bentonite and the working chamber is approximately two-thirds filled. The two chambers are connected in the form of communicating pipes via an opening in the submerged wall. A filter cake is generated ahead of the cutting wheel by pressurizing the bentonite in the working chamber with compressed air. The soil and the groundwater pressure can reach up to 6.5 bar. Changes in the geology and consequent changes in pressure can be compensated by adjusting the pressurization. The excavated material falls into the excavation chamber. Small sized grains are largely dissolved in the bentonite, whereas stones and debris sink to the bottom. The opening of the suction pipe is protected by a nozzle grid. Two agitators and mobile flushing nozzles guarantee smooth removal of the excavated material. The excavated material is pumped through the suction line to the separation plant at the surface. Here, the soil material is separated out and removed from the bentonite suspension, and the clean suspension is transferred back to the slurry circuit. To provide an optimum flushing process, the feed line supplies several nozzles distributed around the TBM circumference, which can be connected during peak load times. 
As tunneling advances, the feed and slurry pipe connection is extended. Flexible extension lines are installed on the third gantry to prevent the pipelines uncoupling after each thrust phase. Sliding shoes compensate the machine's movements. The pipe wagon is released after the final position has been reached and then returned to the starting point. The extension pipe is then installed in the generated gap.